In this video, we're going to talk about the Hierarchy Filter Custom Visual from XFizz. This visual acts as a slicer, but allows you to see your different categories in hierarchical view. The really cool thing about the Hierarchy Filter is the ability to view values alongside the category names as well. For example, if I take a measure, we can throw it into the value well, and we will see the value associated with each category. We even have the option to throw a measure into the tooltip value, so that now we can show tooltips for our slicer selection. Collections. Above this functionality, there are a ton of formatting options to make this slicer work exactly the way you would like. For example, if we open up the formatting pane and look at the filter options, we have a ton of options here to allow us to customize this hierarchy filter. For example, we can enable search, which allows us to use the search bar. For example, I can search for store and we see that our data is filtered down to store, but we can even search for multiple categories such as store and blue. We see computer store and blue are available in our slicer selections. And if we scroll down, we actually see that anything that matches this pattern will work and return for us. For example, gift store and blue show up as well. We can also filter this slicer directly from this value filter. For example, we can set a range to only show us values that are greater than let's say 50,000 and apply that and we'll see that our slicer has been filtered down based on this value filter. We can reset that and close it out. On the right side, we see that we have options to allow single select, select all options, or expand to a certain level. I am defaulting to two levels of expansion, but we can expand out to four by default, or down to one if we choose to make the user drill through each category. So I will set that default to three for now. We have the option to enable the custom context menu, and the context menu allows you to rearrange the items, collapse all the items, or expand all the items if desired. We have the option to display the child count to show us the number of child nodes beneath each level of the hierarchy. We can also hide blanks, which is a really cool feature that allows us to hide blank categories, values, or both values and category. For example, if I click on value plus category, that entire blank column is going to disappear. Next, we can decide between a list or a dropdown. So if I switch this to dropdown, we'll now see this dropdown bar, which can be expanded. And also what's really cool about this dropdown option is if you select a couple of selections, we'll see those pop up in this bar up top. So if I select black and blue, we can see those populated above. Switching back to our list, we can close out of this section and go on to the column headers. We can flip that on and we can see our column headers showing through here. We have the ability to resize these if we want or switch these around. We also have a lot of formatting options for these column headers. Let's open up this category and we can see that we have the option to change that header height, the text size, font color, or background color. Next, we can completely customize the look and feel of the slicer in the appearance section. So if we open that up, we'll see all of the options we have available to us. We can change that text size. We can change the way that these items are displayed based on the interaction state. For example, if I wanna set up formatting for the default state of my visual, I have the option to do that. For example, I can turn on alternate row customization and give the background colors an alternate gray and white color so we see that that is occurring right here I'll go ahead and clear my selections as well so all of those alternating row colors are coming through if we change our interaction state to on hover we can change the background color of the items on hover so I will change our hover background color to this orange color we see when I hover over items, that is now showing as that orange color. Similarly, if we change this to on selection, we can change the background colors of selected items. So if I change selected background color to this blue, now I make a selection, we can see that our selection will show up as blue. Really great stuff there. I'm gonna switch back to our default state and get rid of our alternating row. And also scrolling down below, we have the option to change our checkbox color. I will change this to a red color and also make our checkbox background color a little bit lighter. So now we have this nicely formatted checkbox. We can also set our row spacing. I will change that to 10, just to see what that does, make them spread out a little bit more. We can also change our value column width. We can customize this visual even more in the styling section. So I'll close down the appearance section, open up styling. So we have the ability to style the top nodes or parent nodes exactly how we'd like them. By default, our top node is set to bold. As we can see with this top node here, computer store is bolder than the other categories. We can switch that to italics to see what that would do. We see now our top node is in italics. We'll switch that back to bold and come over to our parent node 
and change that to italics to give it a little bit of difference between the parent nodes and those child nodes. Scrolling down, we also see that we have the ability to change from our arrow icons to a plus and minus icons. So if we change that, we can now see that changes to a minus and a plus icon. We also have the ability to create conditional formatting rules. We can do that by clicking on this pencil icon. That's gonna open up the conditional formatting editor. And from here, we can just click on this plus button and add a new rule. So I'm going to add a rule based on our variance between this year and last year. So I'm gonna call this variance is less than zero, set it to red, and we're going to change the font color of each category that has less than zero for the variance. So I'm gonna scroll down. If our revenue variance is less than zero, I wanna make that show as red. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And I'm gonna do a very similar rule. I'm gonna call this variance is greater than zero. And I'm gonna set this to a nice green color. So that works right there. Click save. And I'm gonna scroll down. If our revenue variance is greater than zero, I'm gonna make it green. So now once we have these rules configured, I can go back and we can see that that conditional formatting is applied. But we do have the option to apply this conditional formatting on the fly. So our end user is able to show what conditional formatting rules that they want applied to their slicer. In the context menu, we see this conditional formatting option. We see both variance is less than zero and variance is greater than zero are checked on. We can turn off either of those if we like or turn off both. I'm gonna go ahead and switch those back on. And now we have our conditional formatting applied on the fly. The final amazing feature of this XVIZ hierarchy filter is the ability to show categories with only single child nodes. I'm gonna go over to this other tab to show this demo. So when you have multiple categories with only one child node, it might be kind of difficult to dig into each of those categories. For example, if we look at this hierarchical view, we see that five entries are in the US and we see it's broken down by region and then state and then city. So if we look down a little bit, we see that the South region only has one child node, which is Texas, and Texas only has one child node, which is Plano. Similar for the West region, the West only has one entry, California has one entry, and that entry is San Diego. So there isn't really a need to show each child node in this case, since it's basically a one-to-one -one relationship for those three categories. To handle this, we can go over to the formatting options over on the right. Let me clear my selection and open up the filter options and scroll down all the way until you see single child display. So by default, it's on display all, which is gonna show all levels of your hierarchy, but we can toggle between a few selections here. So if we only want to display the parent only, we can click on that. And we see that instead of San Diego showing below California, we're now showing the parent of that single child node. So it's not necessary to show that lowest data because the parent will do. The next option allows us to show multi-level. And this is interesting because when you have multiple continuous categories with single child nodes, for example, South Texas Plano, those bottom two single child nodes are going to be hidden now because they don't provide much information below that South region. Finally, we can also show our child as parent so instead of Texas now, we're showing Plano. And instead of California, we're showing San Diego. So we're skipping that middle level showing the state level because there wasn't any information to glean since it was a one-to-one-to-one -one -to -one relationship. And with that, those are most of the amazing features from the XVIZ Advanced Hierarchy Slicer. I definitely recommend that you check out this advanced slicer because it allows you to add a whole new dimension to slicing and dicing your data within Power BI. This adds a lot of functionality above and beyond the default slicer. So I definitely recommend downloading it from AppSource. It is free to use in Power BI Desktop.